here and I'm back with another video. Today's video is a very interesting one, highly requested. So I guess today is just about a one-on-one -on -one chat with you guys, telling you how I planned my Japan trip, which I went to December, January of last in this year. Because a lot of you have been asking like, where did I stay? How much did I spend? Uh, how did I go about planning my trip? But anyway, yeah, it was a really interesting experience. I felt like going with just one other friend, which was Sasha, was really great for me because I learned to be a lot more independent. If you guys have any other questions that I don't actually cover in this video, uh, you can be sure to comment down below and I'll just answer whatever questions you have. In case this is actually a long video, I'm going to uh, put the kind of chapter times in the description below as well. So if you're curious about one thing in particular, you can just jump straight there and skip all my other ramblings. And so first of all, let's answer the five W's. Gotcha, gotcha. Who? Who do I recommend going to Japan with? Well, that is actually completely up to you. I chose to go with just one friend, Sasha. I was actually planning on making a trip with quite a few other friends, but then as we were planning it in the initial stages, everyone was quite unsure about it. So then I found it was easier to just be like, Sasha, let's go to Japan, let's fix the dates, let's get everything booked. And so everything was planned quite quickly. Yeah, it gets a lot more messy, I think, when you're trying to go with a bigger group of people. So definitely, if you decide to go with that big group of people, make sure that you're planning like months in advance. Next is where. I stayed in Tokyo and I also stayed a night at the Mount Fuji area, so that was Kawaguchiko, and then also a week in Hakuba to go skiing, which is one of the highlights of my trip. Uh, there are definitely a lot of other places that I really want to go, but basically I also really want to visit like Osaka, uh, what's the other one called? There's a lot more regions in Japan that I want to explore. So I've also been to Hokkaido. And that was really fun. I went there for skiing as well. Let's talk about flights. So this is the first thing that I always look at when I plan a trip. So looking at pricings, making sure that the airline you catch is actually safe as well. And it's a comfortable trip because you don't want to spend like 13 hours in a plane all cramped up and like the employees there are really rude and you just don't have a very good time. And I feel like travel is really important to be comfortable on and then it's like the first leg of the journey before you're actually starting your real adventure. I actually ended up booking with ANA, which is All Nippon Air. It's kind of like a sub-branch of Japan Airlines. And I looked them up online, they had like five star safety rating, five star comfort, and everyone was like giving them raving reviews. So I was like, yes, this is the one I want to go on. Um, and it was a really good choice. Luckily for me at the time, they actually just started doing direct flights from Sydney to uh, Tokyo. So the flight itself wasn't that long, there were no stopovers or anything. And also because it was a new flight, they had everything uh, quite reasonably priced in the beginning. So I ended up paying about $1,200 for the flight uh, return. When you book your tickets as well on the day, you can actually check in via express check-in, which is really convenient because it saves you a lot of time and you're not waiting in lines forever. Right, so when we got there, pretty much taxis are quite expensive. So they're expensive in Australia, they're expensive in Japan, as we expect. So our main transport to get around was the subway and like trains. And Japan has a really good subway system. It's like a train comes every five minutes, maybe even every two minutes. At the airport, you could buy a PASMO, which is like kind of like an Opal card here in Australia, and you just load money onto it. It's this little shop that's like situated at the airport station. So you just go up to them and you can talk to them in English. I think there's a deposit, like initial deposit that you give in and you can get it back when you return the little card. So that was around 5,000 yen, I think. Oh, I meant 500 yen. So we initially loaded 3,000 yen onto our PASMO cards. That's about $30 worth of credit. There are these little machines at every station and you can just top up your balance there. And you can actually switch those machines to English so it becomes easier for you to top up. Something that I would say was a pain point would be that the train tickets are quite expensive. So one trip might be like 250 but because we were traveling everywhere 
it would amount to a lot in a day and we found that we were recharging like 3,000 yen onto our PASMOs every few days which led to quite high costs for transport for us. What I do recommend is probably uh, trying to pick like areas that you want to go to that are close to each other so instead of having to keep catching trains from one place to the other you can just walk. What's next? Uh, itinerary? Yeah? Okay so. Itinerary was the fun bit to plan. It was like we just went online to all the tourist sites and searched what to do in Japan and we came up with this like really awesome itinerary. Yeah, so we made a list of everything that we wanted to do and I don't even think we managed to get through that list. I can actually link the itinerary below in case you guys want to see it for yourselves and like kind of use it to plan your own trips. We went to Japan for 19 days and I think that was enough for us because by the end I was feeling like really tired and I missed my friends and my family and I just wanted to go home. I was like ready to go home. But when I was there, I was just enjoying every moment. If you like anime and like technology and all that sort of stuff, definitely go to Akihabara. Because this is full of like technology, games, figurine shops and like uh, maid cafes. When you go there, it's best to go at night because everything is lit up. There's so many people everywhere and there are all these arcades that you can play at. Shibuya. Shibuya is the heaven, my heaven. I actually got this jacket at the Adidas store in Shibuya and I love it so much. Everything there is like so beautiful. They've got Shibuya 109, which is basically like nine levels of just girls clothing. They've got all the Western brands like Zara, uh, Forever 21, H&M, etc. And they have that famous five-way crossing, which you guys can see from my Shibuya vlog, which was Japan vlog 2. Shinjuku. We didn't go to Shinjuku for that long. All I know is Shinjuku is the central place to change trains, basically. It's quite a big place. It's very busy. And there was actually a robot cafe there, which I read about online, but we never got the chance to go there. It's quite expensive as well. I think it was like $80 to go. Apparently the food's not that good, but the experience is unforgettable. Ginza? Ginza's kind of like the high-end suburb, more for the rich, like luxurious people. But it's definitely good to go there and have a look. We didn't really spend much time there. There are a lot of department stores there, so a lot of spending goes on. I heard that there's an Alice in Wonderland cafe there as well, which I really wanted to go to. Uh, Tokyo Tower! <gasps> If you watched my third Japan vlog, I think we actually went to Tokyo Tower on New Year's Eve and it was so beautiful. We went all the way up. I really wanted to go to the One Piece Tower, which is within Tokyo Tower, but you have to pay like a different ticket and stuff like that. But we went up like Tokyo Tower, we went up to the Special Observatory and it was really beautiful. You got to just see the whole of Japan below you and we stayed there for hours, like we were there in the daytime and then we watched the sunset and the lights in Japan all come on and then like Japan just was like the light city and it was really beautiful. It's not that expensive either to go there so it's kind of like a budget thing if you're on a budget. We also went on the same night to Roppongi uh, which is like the nightclub area so it's like dirty and there's all these young people out at night going clubbing and drinking and it's kind of scary actually for me and Sasha when we were there. People didn't really bother us that much I guess but like we could see on New Year's Eve all these people having New Year's Eve parties and they were like physically trying to grab girls into their clubs and parties. There's also a few good karaoke places there so that's where we spent our New Year's Eve just trying to like kill time before 12 a.m. Uh, we also went to Disneyland, Tokyo Disneyland, one of the highlights of my trip as well. I love any kind of Disneyland. Last time I went to Disney Sea, which was the theme park just like next door to Tokyo Disneyland. And this one did not disappoint. It was really fun. We got to see the beautiful castle and there are a lot of fun rides. The only thing is expect a lot of lines. So we were lining up for like two hours for one particular ride. The line itself, it's like, it goes into a cave and then there's so many turns and stuff. And every time we got to a bend, I was like, oh, we're finally at the front of a line. And then you would look ahead and there would just be so much more of the line to go. The ticket is about 
$70 per person, I think, and you can actually pay that there, but bring enough cash with you, just in case that your card doesn't work. Because I had a union pay card, and for some reason, some people didn't accept it, so I kind of ran out of cash on that day, and then I was like, stressing out. Uh, Harajuku, another fashion district, which I absolutely adored. I love like Shibuya, Harajuku, uh, Shimu Kitazawa, Places like that, absolutely amazing. Um, there are a lot of vintage stores there and secondhand stores which you can check out. And I think I mentioned in my Japan haul that when I went during New Year's, there are a lot of sales and they do this thing called Fukubukuro. So that's like a Japanese like lucky bag. Make sure you guys visit, I think it's called Takeshi, Takeshita Dori. It's a lane in Harajuku and it's the famous one where there's all those stores and crepes. Crepes, glorious crepes, so delicious, but they were really heavy as well. And they're quite cheap. I got one for like 550 yen, which is like $5.50. And it was absolutely delicious. Something else that you can do in Harajuku is their photo booths. So we accidentally like wandered downstairs because we thought it was a store. And then we came into this like photo booth land. Oh, I'll actually show you what we took. It's like, yeah, I hung it up. <laughs> How cute are we? And look what they do to our eyes. When we were in Harajuku as well, for one of the days, we visited Meiji Shrine. It was a cleansing and spiritual experience, I would say. There was a lot of activities to do in there. You could actually visit the shrine itself, learn a bit about the culture of Japan, and also there was like a little garden that we went in. It was really beautiful. Though I think it would have been a lot better if it was spring when we went because then there would have been so many beautiful like cherry blossom trees. Asakusa is actually the place where Sensoji Temple is. So there's this lane, I forgot what it's called, but it's in my video. And it has all these like touristy kind of things. And then when you get to the end, you actually reach Sensoji Temple. And that's where a lot of people go during the new year to pray for the coming year. And then we also went to Odaiba, which is an island. So you catch a ferry there or you catch a train there. And that is so fun. It's such a beautiful place. It makes you feel like you're not even in Tokyo anymore. You're not near the city area. And there's like a little beach and it feels kind of like a holiday destination. There's some really big onsens there as well. But Sasha and I were kind of scared to go to the onsens because we were like, you have to take off your clothes and be in the public. <laughs> not quite that comfortable with each other yet. Hey, we also went to Ueno. We went to Ueno Park and it's humongous. There's so many like different things to do there. You see a lot of people just enjoying the park. We actually went to the science museum there and it was a lot of fun. I keep saying that. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, but it was. I learned a lot. It was, I kind of felt like finally I was getting some education and Suidobashi. Suidobashi was something that I hadn't heard about before going to Japan. It's like this area that has a theme park, it has food, it has shopping. Pretty much the three things that excite me all in one area. And then Mount Fuji, we went to Fuji Q, best experience of my life so far. They've got four uh, world record rides. I really recommend you guys go there because the first year we thought, my brother and I thought that Mount Fuji would just be like a mountain and we'd look at it and be like, Wow, it's amazing. Let's go home now. Um, but actually, we missed out on one of the best amusement parks I've ever been to. Take the time to go there, stay a night at Mount Fuji, and when you're going to see the mountain as well, make sure you go early in the morning before the clouds set in and before the line start growing to go up. And then the last thing we did was skiing in Hakuba. I'll talk about that a little bit later on, actually. What to pack? Bring very, very little amount of clothes. Wear an outfit there, bring your pajamas and that's it. And then leave a huge empty suitcase because you're bound to do all your shopping there. You're just gonna dress in everything that you buy every day. For me, we were only allowed to have 23 kilos. Make sure you bring like one outfit, toiletries, like your lenses. Bring a camera as well. There's a lot of things that you're gonna wanna take photos of and like keep memories of there. A laptop if you want, I'm not sure like how dependent you are, I'm really dependent on my laptop. And then in terms of money, I brought about $1,500 in cash and I had the rest of my money on a little bank card. In terms of Wi-Fi, 
This is something that you guys really need to think about before you go to Japan because it can be really important to have connection to the internet, especially if you're a foreigner and you don't really know anything. You access the internet to like translate things, find your way around, even like look up new places to go or if you're confused about something you can just do any kind of search. Sasha and I went about it two different ways. She ordered uh, one of those portable Wi-Fi packs that you can find easily online. I'll also link that in the description below. What I did personally was I switched SIM cards with my mum and she uses Vodafone. They give you international 3G on your like existing plan just for an extra $5 a day. It was really useful because it meant that I wasn't really relying on battery or like some variable factors that could mean that I just lost my Wi-Fi suddenly. In terms of accommodation, Definitely check out the usual suspects, Airbnb, uh, the, Japan has some sleeping pods, like those capsules that you can book, it's like $30 a night if you're on a budget. And this time around we stayed with Sasha's family friends which was really lucky for us because it meant that we weren't spending more on accommodation which was a very big cut from our expenses. I literally do not remember a thing about what I was saying. Yeah, I think I was just about to talk about the budgeting of my trip. We wanted to try stick under $5,000. Here is my budget for the trip. I just put everything in a an Excel spreadsheet so I could track how much I was spending, what was something that I had already spent, how much I was going to spend on shopping, food, transport, yeah. So if I run through it really quickly, it might give you an idea of how you guys are going to budget your trips. I knew for the last week we spent uh, $1,450 included live pass, getting there by coach, accommodation, food, not all food like breakfast but oh ski hire as well. So the flight itself was $1,200. might want to allocate some more money for accommodation which was something we didn't have as I mentioned before. Uh, food I think we allocated like $800. <laughs> Transport was quite a lot. I think allocate like $300 to $500 for transport and then kind of other variable costs was about $1,500 budget. So it was pretty good. I mean the food there is really cheap so you don't really have to worry about that too much. And if you're going during New Year's it's all the sale season so clothing is not that expensive either. One thing I would be aware of though is planning your New Year's Day because a lot of shops actually close during New Year's Day. What else was I going to talk about? Ah, the day before. Things to remember. General tips when you're going on a trip. These are things that I learned off Sasha. Like, to be honest, I didn't know about this before we went and she told me to do everything. So thank you to her. All credit goes to her for being smart and making sure that we survived. Before you go, scan your passport, your IDs and all of that stuff and make sure you have it accessible somewhere just in case like you lose your passport or something at least you still have kind of like a digital copy of your identification somewhere. Also write down all your emergency contact numbers just so in case you get into trouble you know who to call. If you're staying somewhere make sure to get one of their business cards that have their address on it in case you get lost so you can just show it to a taxi driver and he can take you back. Get travel insurance because I know one of my friends went to Bali and he didn't even bother with travel insurance because he's an idiot. You know who I'm talking about. Get travel insurance just in case. And you can download some apps. I downloaded Tabi Mori Japan and that is a really good app for travelers because it contains a map, it has phrases, train times, contacts, and stuff like that. Yeah, okay, so next topic is skiing. So we went to Hakuba in the last week and the snow was absolutely beautiful. So if you're a keen skier in Australia, I definitely recommend you guys go to Japan to try skiing there because the powder is just amazing. It's soft, it's fluffy and there's just so much of it and there's not that much artificial snow either. They get a lot of natural snowfall. We booked with Oz Snow and I was a bit worried about this because I read the reviews online and like one person was saying they booked with Oz Snow at one of their lodges and apparently everyone got gastro. So I was like, Ugh. but we took the risk and it paid off because it was a beautiful place. We had a private room to ourselves. And the good thing about Hakuba is that there's like, 
so many different ski resorts you can go to. Everyone interested in ski, don't click away just yet. I'm going to tell you about all the different resorts. If you're not interested in skiing, pop on to my next uh, chapter time. Hapo One, we went there on the first day. It's pretty good. The best thing about it was it was right outside where we lived, so we could just walk across the road and there was the gondola that took us up. There were quite a few blue runs. We tried one of the black runs with the moguls and that was pretty difficult. I went back there like quite a few times just trying to perfect it. We went to Goryu and Hakuba 47 for two days and definitely that was one of our favorites. Hakuba 47 has this ski park. It was so much fun because Sasha and I are complete noobs when it comes to parks. So we were like trying to learn all these new tricks and skills and like doing the jumps and we went down the half pipe and we were like oh my gosh we're such amateurs because everyone else was like super pro. Two mountains are actually like connected so you can go across from Hakuba 47 to Goryu and there's so much to explore. The runs there are amazing and there were like some double black runs that we got to try out and I remember it was really funny because we went up I think we were in Cortina and I remember it was snowing really hard that day and I took her up and I noticed already that the blue run would be closed up there but on the map it said there was a blue run up there yeah so that's what happened and I was like Sasha can I please lead for once so she was like yeah sure I'll follow you and then I took her up to the top and it was snowing hard and then there was a sign at the top and it was like blue run closed and then the only other way down was a black run and I was like oops sorry <laughs> I guess there's only one way down I'm sure she enjoyed herself in the end I think we did go to Iwatake oh no we went to Sugaki and that's like the place for more beginner skiers there's a lot of green runs there it's like green run paradise and I thought it was gonna be a really boring day but then all the lifts at the top opened up and they're like a little bit more difficult I guess and there's a lot more to explore up there. Something that I really noticed about Japan skiing though was that there's a lot of patrols and they don't really tolerate off-pace skiing except in Cortina so if you do go off-pace you kind of have to be careful and watch out for like the patrols otherwise they might take your lift pass away from you. We had a free day during the week that we were skiing. I have to say if you're not skiing in Hakuba then there isn't that much to do because we walked around and no one was there and we were like oh everyone must be on the mountains or something so we went back home pretty early and then just like lay in bed and did nothing <laughs> yeah so that was skiing Ding. cool i hope you enjoyed this really long video and it was very informative for those who are going to japan i know you guys are absolutely going to love it so much and you're going to want to keep going back Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, share this video with your friends, do all the things that I usually just say at the end of my videos, and that's a wrap. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Smiling every day with Haley. I'm